Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night Through the night So it's a challenging day Before he take me away Behind to the grind Success on my mind Good morning Me never good morning The how everybody did do this wonderful morning It's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Blessed and pleasant morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. It is the 29th day of July in 2024, and outside my window, the wind is howling like I don't know. The sky is gray outside, the poor coconut trees are all bowing to the west. Mm -hmm. because that east wind coming off the sea is so strong. I can't even open the windows on the east this morning. I can only look at the south window and see what the conditions are like. The sea was angry when I took a peek earlier. It seems as if though mm, it's going to be a wet and bleaky day. But all the same, wet and bleaky, warm and sunny, beautiful day to be alive just to see it. We're going to kick things off this morning with one entitled, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Let's have a listen.
a beautiful one to start off the morning there. That one entitled, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Let's then get our words here up on screen for today. And I believe I could make that happen for us here in three, two, and one. It should be up and running at this time. I do hope it is showing up on your screen. And this morning we are celebrating the Feast of Mary, Mary and Martha of Bethany. And we'll talk about them, they being the siblings of um, Lazarus and two of the greatest followers and supporters of the ministry of Jesus. So, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for such the Father seeks to worship him. Words from John chapter 4 verse 20. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer, Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong our power and you, who are the source of all this. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle, the Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100 and can be found on page 37. And this morning, as we celebrate the feast of Mary and Martha of Bethany, as well as the ordination of women in the Episcopal Church, let's listen to a song version of the Jubilate. to the Lord, all ye, all ye lands, serve the Lord, the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing, know ye that the Lord is God, it is he who hath made us, and that we, not we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his A lovely one there indeed, the psalm of praise. We continue then by calling to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to our mighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things perhaps that might have been unkind to ourselves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and found, things done and done. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the goodness of life, to the honor and glory through Jesus Christ. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, 
and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 56 and 57, and using a previously recorded version of Psalm reading for us this morning is Miss Arlette. Let's start. Good morning. The Psalms appointed for today are Psalms 56 and 57. Psalm 56. Have mercy on me, O God, for my enemies are hounding me. All day long they assault and oppress me. They hound me all the day long. Truly, there are many who fight against me, O God. Whenever I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. In God whose word I praise, in God I trust and will not be afraid. For what can flesh do to me? All day long they damage my cause, for their only thought is to do me evil. They band together, they lie in wait, they spy upon my footsteps because they seek my life. Shall they escape despite their wickedness? O oh God, in your anger, cast down the peoples you have noted my lamentation put my tears in your bottle are they not recorded in your book whenever i call upon you my enemies will be put to flight this i know for god is on my side in god the lord whose word i praise in god i trust and will not be afraid for what can mortals do to me I am bound by the vow I made to you, my God. I will present to you thank offerings, for you have rescued my soul from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Psalm 57 Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful, for I have taken refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until this time of trouble has gone by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who maintains my cause. He will send from heaven and save me. He will confound those who trample upon me. For God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions that devour the people. Their feet are spears and arrows, their tongue a sharp sword. They have laid a net for my feet, and I am bowed low. They have dug a pit before me, but have fallen into it themselves. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory above all the earth. My heart is firmly fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and make melody. Wake up, my spirit. Wake, lute, and harp. I myself will waken the dawn. I will confess you among the peoples, O Lord. I will sing praise to you among the nations, for your loving kindness is greater than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Exalt yourself above, above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Happy birthday to my sis. We want to thank Miss Arlette for leading us in the reading of the Psalms. Our second canticle for this morning is canticle number 10, the, song, the second song of Isaiah, based on Isaiah chapter 55. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Fall upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher 
than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that go forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Our Bible lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew chapter 27, verse 24, go to 31. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 27, verse 24 to 31. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourself. Then the people and the, as a whole answered him, His blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governors took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into crowns, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. And then they led him away to crucify him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. If you'd allow me a couple of seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading, this one, Matthew chapter 27, a continuation from where we left off on Friday. And this one is the ending of the judgment of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 27, when we started, I believe it was on, yeah, it was on Friday the 26th that we started Matthew chapter 27, verse 1 to 10, where we looked at Jesus being handed over to Pilate and the death of Judas who returned the money to the Sanhedrin because, of course, he was miserable in his end, seeing that he was um, remorseful in that he had condemned Jesus to die. Of course, we know that he was met with indifference by the Sanhedrin and so ended up killing himself. But after that, of course, Jesus goes before Pilate in verse 11 through to 14, and Jesus greatly impresses Pilate. Pilate, of course, questioning whether Jesus was the king of the Jew and Jesus um, not responding, where in verse 15 to verse 18 of this same Matthew chapter 27, you will see how Pilate was really trying to give Jesus a chance to be free. You know, um, it was the custom to release one prisoner and Pilate had really tried for it to be for it to be Jesus, but the crowd had requested Barabbas. So now Barabbas was one of the persons who led several insurrections. He had committed murder during those um, insurrections. He would be like a revolutionary terrorist in today's term. But the people knew that they wanted Jesus and they had they had decided already that Jesus must die. And so the leaders of the Sanhedrin would have convinced the crowds to, to call for the death of Jesus and try as Pilate could. He could not get Jesus off the hook. And Pilate was influenced both by his wife as well as by the religious leaders. He was sitting on the judgment seat, you know, and, and his wife had said to him, you know what, don't, don't do anything to do with this man because I had suffered today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude to, to, to ask for Barabbas and to destroy Jesus. And so in today's reading, we find that the demands of the crowd to release Barabbas and, and, and to crucify Jesus was so strong that Pilate had to give in. Hmm? But Pilate's thing was, no, I will have nothing to do with him. You crucify him yourself. And one of the things that, that Pilate did is at the beginning of verse 24, Pilate then 
washes his hands. He tries to avoid responsibility for Jesus' faith. It was out of character for, for Pilate to bend in the way of the religious leaders and the crowd. He could have chosen differently. He would have lost favor with them and not be as popular. And he was afraid that the crowd would, would riot if he didn't give them what he want. <clears throat> Pardon me. But he, he washed his hands saying, you know what? It is out of my control. Personally, I wish this Jesus no harm. But these things will happen because the power and the responsibility uh, 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 will rest on him, even though he is saying, I have found no fault in him. He is not standing strong enough against the crowds and the religious leaders, but he washes his hands. And it was meaningless, really. It was meaningless because he had the authority and the power to say, no, you can't have Jesus. But because he was concerned about his own popularity, he allowed the influence of the crowd to overtake him and one of the things that i find interesting that i don't think we recognize in our own liturgy as anglicans and as priests because i believe the romans do it as well i've never paid attention to see whether the methodist does it but just before we go to the altar to consecrate the bread and wine to break the bread to, to break the body and blood of Jesus, one of the things we do as clergy is you'll see us wash our hands. A bowl will be brought with water that will be poured over our hands. And it is not necessarily for sanitary purposes. Yes, it is for sanitary purposes in terms of now, many of us, when we pour the water over our hands, it's either before or after we would have used sanitizer for some before and after we use sanitizer. But even before the spread of COVID, where sanitizers were a big thing at the altar, the washing of the hands with the water is symbolic of that which Pilate did. I am about to go as a minister of God's church up to the altar to break his to break this bread that represents his body and to share this cup which represents his blood, this wine which represents his blood. But I am washing my hands symbolically to show that it is not through my own fault that his body was broken and bruised or his blood spilled. I did not condemn him to die. And so we wash our hands this way. But in the case of Pilate, it is completely, it's completely different. Hmm? He was responsible even though he washed his hand, he, he, it might sound, you know, like he was trying to say, I have no responsibility for this, but it was meaningless because the book had stopped with him as the governor of the time. The power and the responsibility of what to do with Jesus rested solely on him, and <laughs> which is why his name stays, yes? He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He, he was beaten, he was flogged, Pilate tried to do everything he could with him before trying to release him and and he insisted you know, Pilate insisted I am innocent of the blood of this person this just person hidden in Pilate's attempt at that self-justification is the declaration of Jesus is innocent you know when he called Jesus this person he admitted that Jesus was an innocent man but Pilate himself is is not innocent he, he gave in to all of it and it's interesting because after Pilate washes his hand, he hands them over. He releases Barabbas. He hands Jesus over to the crowd. And then Jesus goes through his strip stripping and his scourging. And the crown of thorns is played upon his head, placed upon his head. And he is mocked and healed as king of the Jews. And they will abuse him. And standing there with him, watching all of this abuse, are two of the women who had been with him all the time. Two women who commemorate today Mary and Martha of, of Bethany and Mary and Martha of course journeyed with Jesus throughout um, his ministry they were there um, in Bethany when their brother Lazarus died they had sent word to Jesus they they were close to, to Jesus and they are mentioned in several episodes in the gospel um, in Luke chapter 10 is um, verse 38, I think it is, is the one occasion when Jesus and the disciples were guests at their house and Mary sat at their feet listening while Martha was busying herself with household chores, preparing meals and waiting on the guests. Um, there is the instance, of course, where Lazarus dies and Jesus comes to them and Martha, upon being told he was approaching, ran out to meet him while Mary was still at the house, you know? Um, and, and it's interesting because the, the week before crucifixion, I think in, in John chapter 12, the week before crucifixion, as Jesus is reclining, 
you've heard it a couple of days ago, it is said that Mary would have been the person with the expensive flask of perfume that anoints Jesus' feet and was criticized for wasting what might have been sold to raise money for the poor and Jesus, of course, standing up on her behalf. But these incidents, yeah, these incidents shows that Mary and Martha were always helpful to the ministry of Jesus, were willing out of their love for God and their love for neighbor respectively to be supportive of the ministry of Jesus. And it's interesting because it's 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 not clear or it you would the early church would make it seem like women were not important in the ministry of Jesus, but yet you have all of these instances of, of these women. And Mary and Martha would have opened their home to Jesus. They would have willingly out of love open not just their home but their hearts to jesus and to the followers of jesus and they would have been such supporters of jesus's ministry that in jesus jesus's time of need with regards to the same arrest and crucifixion they would have been right there with mary jesus's mother to support her as she goes through the ordeal of watching her son die and it's 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 interesting that the support of the the ministry of jesus during while it was happening and after his own death then is something that Mary and Martha of Bethany are credited for. And I mean, can you imagine having the privilege of offering rest and refreshment in your home to the Messiah? Yeah. Can you imagine um, caring and loving Jesus enough and having such a close familial relationship with him that when Lazarus dies, you could have sent for him. And it's, it's, it's interesting to to note and to think of the fact that when we see Jesus as, as this far out there entity that we can't reach, hmm, to, to many he was just another friend, a friend who was accomplishing big things that they support. And I always liken it to, to being the child or the cousin or the brother of somebody important, you know. Maybe one of these days I become important, but I think of it like, for instance, maybe if you're the governor general, if you're the governor general, you become governor general and oh, there are all these protocols that people have to follow and, and you have all of the security details and all of this. But when you get home, you are still just daddy or mommy. You're still just uncle or auntie. You're, you're still just you. You understand? And somebody said it to me once, you know, Rev, Rev you don't understand. And I suppose for, for me, it, it doesn't ring true for me because for me, no matter where I am, I am still just Barbara Marie. Um, that doesn't change for me. It doesn't matter the circle in which I am. I, I am still just me. But I guess for some people, like, like my children, for instance, my, my two girls, I know that when they look at me, whether I'm in my robe or I'm at home in chat pants and slippers, I am still just, I'm still just me. Understand? And it's, it's, it's interesting to recognize at times that Jesus, as popular as he was, as, as famous as he was, as powerful as he was, was able to have friendly and, and familial relations with people, recognized him just for him. And I think sometimes we overlook the fact that, pardon me, Jesus the man existed or coexisted at the same time as Jesus the Messiah. And Mary and Martha, in my mind, give us this, this, this sense of the fact that Jesus was, though the Messiah, yet still man enough. To be, a, to, to, to be in need of the comfort and the kindness and the hospitality of others. And when you think about it on the Feast of Mary and Martha in the Episcopal Church, yes, in the Episcopal Church, this is the day that is celebrated in terms of the ordination of women, the, the of ordination of women in the Episcopal Church. July 29th in 1974, um, the 11 women were ordained to the priesthood in Philadelphia. And, and it was a historic thing for women because during the first half of the 20th century, women in the Episcopal Church had just begun exploring ways to increase their participation in the, light of, in the life of the church. And they had been made deaconesses, which was a separate order from, from male deacons, and they had no way of being ordained so the priesthood they, they had, um, it wasn't until 1970 when lay women 
were seated with, with a voice and vote at general conventions and, and things like this. And canon law was elimin the canon law el eliminated for the order of deaconess so that male and female deacons would be treated equally. And it was quite a, a struggle to include women in the role and the life of the church. And it was on the feast of Mary and Martha, July 29, 1974, when these first 11 women were elevated to the order of, of priesthood. And the, 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 the battle, well, I'm going to call it a battle, but the, 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 the challenge of getting women there and looking for theological support hmm, in order to have these women ordained. And it would be years after that in 1974 before we would have the first ordination of the first two women in the province of the West Indies in the Diocese of Barbados. That was um, now Canon Sonia Hines and Canon Beverly Seely Knight, who are two very good friends of mine in the Diocese of Barbados, but they would have been the first two in our province to be ordained um, as priests um, long after 1974. But of course, the whole ordination would have attracted, even in 1974 with the first 11, controversy and condemnation by many in the church. Yeah, um, It was considered irregular, and women were not allowed to exercise priestly functions yet, but Four more women were ordained in September of 1975, and it wasn't until General Convention in 1976 that the ordination of women to the priesthood was approved. Yeah, and and 1st of January 1977 was the date where it was finally approved, and it was no longer considered taboo um, with regards to canon law. Now the mindset of the people is different. I mean, there are still churches even in Belize where there are men who will not come for communion from female priests still because they do not see the ordination of women as, as a valid thing. But despite all of that, the, the idea of Mary and Martha, the idea of, of women being supportive of the ministry and the work of Jesus Christ and of the kingdom of God is not something that be began in the 70s. It is something that all the way in Bethany, Mary and Martha did, and the role of women in the carrying out of the ministry of Jesus is recognized in the Bible by Jesus himself, you know, and therefore the effort to recognize it as a universal church is, is something that became then a reality in general, um, in, in general church mindset. So 29th of July, Feast of Mary and Martha of Bethany, the anniversary of the first ordination of women to the priesthood in the Episcopal Church, which opened the door then for the wider Anglican communion to um, have women being ordained. And for me, this is, is big because if the first ordinations didn't happen in 1974, which is years before I was born, um, it would not have made it possible for me to do what I'm doing now. You know, And it's interesting because there are still friends of mine who are ministers from various other denominations, non-Anglicans, who will clearly tell me, you know, you are a very brilliant woman and, and you would make a good female Bible study leader, but as a woman, you should not be leading the church. And it's okay. They are entitled to have their opinion. And if I am doing something contrary to the will of God, I am sure if and when I meet him for judgment, I will hear about it. But until such time, we give God thanks for the faith of the women who in many instances is what continues to keep church doors open. Hmm? When you look at lay ministry in the Diocese of Belize, for instance, the amount of female lay ministers um, outnumber the amount of male lay ministers. And in instances where there are no lay ministers or no priests, it is the women in the community who continue to pass on these religious values to, to, the chil to their children and to the society in and so we give God thanks for the willingness of women to partner with Christ in the promotion of the gospel. We give God thanks for the work of women in ordained positions and we commemorate the anniversary of the ordination of women into the Episcopal Church, even as we give God thanks for the example of women like Mary and Martha who were strong in their support for Jesus despite what society of their time would have tried to condemn them for or with. And, you know, it's, it's, it's an example 
for us, you know, as women and as people in general, to remember that despite your gender, despite your age, despite your race, we are all called by God to be ministers of the gospel to all that we come in contact with until, of course, it is fulfilled that his message reaches all the corners of the earth. So, blessings be upon all those who are female ministers of God's word. And, of course, thanks be to God for the ministry of women like Martha and Mary of Bethany who would have paved the way for us as women. Amen. Let's continue then with the profession of our faith through the expression of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life as sin. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be you. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from them. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. For our suffrage this morning, we use suffrage E on page 43. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness and as servants with knowledge and true body. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us, will be. Our first collet for today is the collet for Pentecost proper 12. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing in hope, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Together we say a collet for the feast of Mary and Martha. Generous God, whose son Jesus Christ enjoyed the friendship and hospitality of Mary and Martha and Lazarus of Bethany. Open our hearts to love you, our ears to hear you, and our hands to welcome and serve you in others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Today in our world cycle of prayer, we pray for the people of Canada. And in our ecumenical cycle of prayer, we pray for our sisters and brothers who are members of the Maui Protestant Church. And now we turn to our own prayers of personal intercessions and thanks. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Miss Jermaine Thompson, Miss Ifasina Ifuniemi, Reverend Nicholas Fields, and Mr. Lloyd Neal Jr. Celebrating a birthday today is Reverend Dave Thomas, Mr. Christopher Broster, Mr. Dave Jackman, and Reverend Michael Walcott. To all those celebrating birthdays, we pray God's blessings and peace will continue to be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! In 
our prayers this morning. We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery. And we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following. We remember and pray for Ms. Judith, Ms. Eileen, Ms. Pauline, Ms. Rose, Ms. Grace, Ms. Celine, Ms. Maria, Ms. Norma, Ms. Mary, Ms. Kim, and Ms. Ivy. We remember and pray for Ms. Monica, Ms. Sylvia, Ms. Des, Ms. Aislin, Ms. Justine, Ms. Soila, Ms. Beryl, Ms. Janet, Ms. Marley, Ms. Toya, and Ms. Marvin. Pray for Ms. Myrna, Ms. Janice, Ms. Dylan, Ms. Alma, Ms. Marley, Ms. Crystal, Ms. Amelia, Miss Amy, Miss Molly, Miss Nelita, Miss Marie, Miss Financia, Miss Teresa, Miss Althea, Miss Janice, Miss Jessica, Miss Ruby, Miss Gloria, Miss Marva, Miss Martha, and Miss Betty. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Chanel, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Celestina, Miss Del Boreen, Miss Yolanda, Miss Deshawn, Miss Glenda, Miss Salome, Miss Felicia, Miss Petrona, Miss Sonia, Miss Myrtle, Miss Geraldine, Miss Lorraine, Miss Arlette, Miss Elma. Miss Maud, Miss Alma, Miss Joyce, and Miss Priscilla. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for Miss Beverly, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alaire, Miss Nina, Miss Leonor, Miss Tanya, Miss Robin, Miss Jane, Miss Camille, Miss Deisha, Miss Fiona, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa, Miss Ulichi, Miss Joan, Miss Ismi, Miss Marcia, Miss Joyce, Miss Carol, Miss Mary W, Miss Natalie, Miss Lynette, Miss Eleanor, Miss Nadia, Miss Elva, Miss Sharon, Reverend Ilona, Miss Velina, Miss Kelia, Miss Gretel, Miss Caroline, Miss Sheena, Miss Catherine, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Anisha, Miss Dominique, Reverend Linda, Michelle Madine, Miss Charlene, and Miss Del Romine. We remember and pray for Miss Julie P, Miss Tracy, Miss Maisie, Miss Anne, Miss Perla, Miss Angela, Miss Debbie, Miss Sophie, Miss Michelle, Miss Pat, Miss Ivy, Miss Dorothy P, Miss Suzette, Miss Kimberly, Miss Shanice, Miss Julie. Miss Dillis, Miss Tessa, Miss Megan, Miss Laurel, Miss Patricia, and Miss Hilda. <clears throat> In our prayers, we continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeff, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, and Mr. Kenny. We pray for Mr. Ewart, Mr. Belhem, Mr. Ian, Mr. Ed, Mr. Charles, Mr. Dion, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Oscar. Mr. Mr. Finley and Mr. Doug. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Ingrid, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismael, Mr. Fennel, Mr. Walter, Mr. Ed Guy Jr., Mr. Carlos, Mr. E, Mr. Salvador, Mr. Sean, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Mark, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Dion, Mr. Pablo, Father Constancio, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kirk, Mr. Donald, Sir Colvin, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Brindel, Mr. Ambrose, Mr. Peter H. and Mr. Hubert. We remember and we Mr. Victor, Mr. Lupa, Mr. Grayson, Mr. James, Mr. J.M.R., Bishop Curry, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Trevor, Mr. Chris, Mr. Ernest, Father Mark, Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Mr. Albert, Mr. Warren, Mr. Franks, Mr. Omar, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Richard, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kieran, Mr. Devin, Mr. Anigi, Mr. Ivan, Mr. Ted, Mr. Paul, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Maxwell, and Bishop Wright. In our prayers, continue to remember and pray for all those who care for the infirm, those who care for the infirm in at home situations, as well as praying for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performing of their duties. In our prayers, <clears throat> we remember and pray for Drs. Hidalgo, Molina, Mongia, Arnal, Manzanero, Ariaga, Shogreen, Ken, Arana, Joseph, Eck, Lawrence, Sosa, Young, Cuellar, Flores, and Rosado. We pray for Nurse McKean, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Pavel, Nurse Sheree, Nurse Joyce, Nurse Lina, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julia, Nurse Ashley, Nurse Katogan, and Nurse Leslie. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those persons who, for whatever reasons, cannot pray for themselves. We remember and pray for them, praying together. Heavenly Father, give us life and health, comfort and victory for sick servants, and give the power of healing to those who minister to them. That those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing. Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those who are grieving the loss of life. We continue to remember and pray for the family of Mr. Lucky Vermont Hero, the family of Miss Jean, the family of Mr. Mike Superman, the family of Mr. Hugh Foster, the family of Mr. Rafael Mesa, the family of Mr. Sia Delia Usher, the family of Mr. Nathaniel Abayem, the family of Mr. Sharina Rad, the family of Mr. William Senior, the family of Mr. Dennis Henkis, the family of Ms. Brenda Gabriel, the family of Mr. Albert Ramos, the family of Ms. Estefania Joseph, the family of Mr. Bert Rasta. For all those living the loss of a loved one, we pray for God's comfort and peace to be on you during this time of grief. Pray for return to In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Elisa, Tammy, Karina, Brittany, Akua, Randolph, Ashley, Ria, Karina, Kai, Ariane, Angel, Garrett, Rihanna, Jamal, Tiffany, Pooch, Freedom, Austin, and Nishan. We pray for our loved ones. Praying for Jason, Scan, Charles S, Charles C, Sam, Gavin, Kishan, and Gary. In our prayers, we continue to and pray for those who are considered most vulnerable in our society. Pray for the poor, the needy, the elderly, persons with pre existing health conditions, persons suffering from homelessness, homelessness, persons in hospice care. We pray for persons who are living in any form of life, any form, form or type of abuse. We pray for those battling mental health challenges, those battling illness such as cancer, HIV, and those struggling with mental health, those struggling with substance abuse issues and pray for God's protection and protection in our prayers we pray for various branches of our security forces we pray for the coast guard we pray for the defense force we pray for the police force officers we remember and pray for the government we pray for the general and the standing of the opposition for ambassadors or members of government we pray for our primary secretaries. We pray for all our public servants, especially those who traverse the roads for work. Continue to pray for all persons in positions of public trust and authority, churches and the church leadership, for the private sector, for all non government organizations, for the In our prayers, we can pray for the because of the national those ravaged by the effects of war and civil rights, those ravaged by natural disasters, for all persons in their various stages of recovery, stages of turmoil at LBC, as we pray for the international community, for ourselves and our region, against the ravages of natural disaster, against the traffic violence and civil rights. For the prayers of our hearts and our homes cannot rest, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments. Stand your protection now and forever. We may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ. Amen. My means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in your presence and a privilege for us to be able to greet each new day in the presence of Almighty God. We want to thank those of you who joined us for our online service yesterday. We want to thank Love FM for broadcasting that service, the Diocesan Online and um, Online Ministry and Online Music Team, Mrs. Wright and Bishop Wright for their role in it. We want to thank the church um, people of um, St. Anne's, Reverend Lisbeth and all her crew there in St. Anne's as they would have led the service for us online yesterday in honor of the Feast of St. Anne. And of course, Anne and Jehoya Kim were the parents of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
people who want to find call of duty your continued support um with our online ministry and of course we want to remind you what our broadcast is for this morning following this broadcast we have Moonbay press at the evening prayer at 5 30 and then compliance at 9 p.m. to close off today. I invite you to join us for any or all of these broadcasts as you are available. And again, if you miss it at its broadcast time, know that you can always revisit the Facebook pages of the churches in the Anglican Diocese of Belize in order to catch a recap of these services. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese. We'll conclude things this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace of dismissal and then our final. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our hearts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to live and to serve our persons through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Brothers and sisters, May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Spirit. For so on now and the Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. We're going to wrap things up this morning with one of my favorite hymns. This is hymn number 106 in the CPWI hymnal. This one entitled All Praise to Thee. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Till tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless. Bye. to do this wonderful morning it's another beautiful day i had to get up and pray and say thank you lord for another day good morning me never good morning that's how everybody to do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So 
Fuck, fuck, fuck.